Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining my 151st episode of the Beast Mode Tech Tuesday. Yes, 151. Wow. It's been a great journey with all of you here. Let's go, says Ethan Rosenberger. Good seeing you as well. And I'm here at a beautiful facility in Beverly Hills known as Brixton Forged. They're the guys who did the wheels, as you can see on the K3B. And for those of you on YouTube, thank you so much for allowing me to use this opportunity as an archive moment. And thank you, Miguel, for making this edit happen. Future projects, yes, and that's one of the reasons why I'm here. As you can know, Bricks and Forge, these guys are extremely creative and also amazing engineers. As you can see, they were able to put this beautiful K3 together. I mean, the wheels really make that car. And we have two projects coming up which are quite advanced in nature, and we were discussing some very good uh, strategies for a wood design that's very different, could, but could also break the internet, and also have given an opportunity to explore their wheel design as well. Yeah, JDM for life, no wick today. It's at the facility in Ontario, and I typically use that when people judge me. More EV, please. Devil to Jay-Z, I'm telling you, that for sure will come. What's the best car to build on a budget where we'll drive? Asked James. Got bread. You know what it is? Some of you may or may not like this, but believe it or not, it's the Mazda Miata. It's a very cost-effective vehicle that is amazing. I mean, I drove a recent MX-5, and I couldn't believe how much fun I had with less than 200 horsepower. It was amazing. Yeah, it is a budget rear-wheel drive. If you're going to buy a Miata, find out without a lifter tick. It's so annoying. That's a good point, Gordon. And you know what helps with lifter tick is the oil. So when you use some of that pure oil, it does a very good job in putting that at bay. So that's why I love to use as well, you know? How do you get a sponsor for pure oil? Ask Benny. Well, Benny, here's, all you do is I'll make it very simple for you. And you let them know I sent you. Because they have a process on a website where they're putting all this information. It's pretty cool. But if you want something like just like that, when we're done with this interaction today, go on to the Pure All USA Instagram page, DM them, let them know I sent you, and just tell them, hey, BC said, hook me up with a sponsorship, and they'll make it happen. It's that simple. Don't forget, go there and make it, make it, make it happen, eh? Do you do all client cars or just all 911s? I, I am not marketing specific. And what I mean by that is, you know how people see Jeleno and he loves all kind of cars? Well, consider me the owner of modification. So that's pretty cool. So I love all kind of vehicles. So if you come to my phone now, you'll see an EG Civic being turbocharged. You see Porsches, you see Hyundais, you see a Rolls Royce, you see Teslas, you see Lotus cars. Um, let me see, I'm going through my mind here. You see a Honda minivan. <laughs> There's so many different vehicles there. And, uh, but I do have a lot of Porsches there that come in, but I am not market specific. I love anything that can go fast, you know? I can see you building an EV Ferrari, says Kyle, as uh, is the trend now. Yes, but you know, one thing about me and the guys here at Bricks and Forge is that we don't follow trends. We tend to pave our own paths and walk that path properly, right? So that being said, um, I see the whole Safari thing is kind of a big deal, but I don't know about following that trend. I kind of want to do something a little different, you know? BC Rose, says Kyle. Yes, sir. -y. That's the plan. That'd be pretty cool, right? <laughs> JDM for Life says, so BC, with EV making a huge presence on the automotive world, is there a special tools that need to diagnose them if they get issues? Yes. Just like any, I'm going to tell you something, just like any high performance engine, yes, they are. Some systems, including what I use in the K3, has onboard diagnostic capabilities. So OBD2, you can actually use OBD2 to diagnose and see what's going on. And that happens with a lot of vehicles nowadays. Now, above and beyond that, would you be shocked to know that modern day petrol engines have more challenges and more sensors and more interaction going on than EVs? Yes, not only by having less moving parts and less need to change oil and maintenance and leaking, all that fun stuff, EVs are pretty less complex than petrol cars. So you can tune them, you can diagnose them, and I look forward to the day that when your car needs service, your EV needs service, it will literally notify you and drive itself to a service station, get repaired and come back. How crazy is that? It's going to happen, guys. What are your thoughts on electric turbos like Torque Amp? Did you test any of them? Would you like to? So, Raw Motorsports, I would like to. I saw Torque Amp. They had a display with my partners at um, SEMA, and the partner, of course, being Dynapack, and I saw it firsthand. It looks like a very novel concept, and something that's very good because no matter what, whether you're using a supercharger and you're cogging a belt directly to the crankshaft, or using wasted energy via exhaust gas velocity, heat, and um, radiation to turn a turbine wheel. 
still having a turbine wheel in the path flow of exhaust does pose a restriction and that takes energy to push out of the internal combustion engine. So anything that can allow to remove that from, this, from the equation can be a bane, a boost, bane, you name it. So that being said, I think it's fantastic. I just haven't had the opportunity to play with one, you know? What is the cheapest car to convert to EV? That's kind of difficult, you know, to, to really ascertain. I would say maybe the most cost-effective car to convert without doing a lot of hacking would be a Boxster. You can find Porsche Boxsters with blown engines for like a couple grand, $1,500. And it provides a platform that's very easy to do a conversion in with a small drive unit from let's say a Tesla one. So it's very easy to do that. When you start uh, using platforms that don't lend themselves very well to a mid or rear, rear engine layout, you start having an opportunity where you have to do a lot of fabrication and, and, and surgery. So it does take a little bit more effort and expense to be able to convert. But with the Boxster being how open it is in the rear, you can easily put a small drive unit, it looks like it fits in there and just makes simple mounts and you're good to go. Do it, do it, do it, says Epi Rider. I just may, sir. What engineering do you specialize in or what did you major in? Well, I majored in chemical engineering. And so what do you mean, BC? You're a chemical engineer, what are you doing with cars, right? Well, it was a perfect curriculum for me and I'll tell you why. Especially in the petrol region, region, arena, um, being a chemical engineer, we had the opportunity to take raw materials and convert to useful products. And that, to be able to do that properly, you have to have a very solid background in chemistry, of course. In mechanical engineering, because as you design plants, you have to have a very strong background in that. In civil engineering, because of course structures are involved when you're designing a complex. Electrical engineering, because all your processes have to be wired up. Um, it's a very, in mathematics of course, physics. It is a very well-balanced engineering curriculum, because you have to put your hand in different things. Like, if you study computer science and engineering, you're kind of limited there, or EE, or ME. But with chemical engineering, you have to touch in all different facets of engineering. So it may be a better engineer when it comes to automotive. Everything from mimic my own fuels, to understanding heat and energy conservation, to being able to design components that can allow for efficiency. That's all the things we think of as a chemical engineer, right? And then as you take it forward, think about now that I'm delving into the EV realm, when it comes to efficiency there and even battery technology, I can dust off my books and get to it again. So it's, it's amazing, you know? Max PP RIV is asking, is your 95, 935 EV all-wheel drive or rear-wheel drive? It's rear-wheel drive. It's only rear-wheel drive. It's my first one, and it's pretty good. Ooh, stick EV is getting exciting. It is indeed, sir. It is indeed. What new EVs coming out today or soon have parts you're itching to pull out for conversions like GMs or tuning batteries or ludicrous mega efficient motor units? Well, two things. I love the 800 volt systems and the technology that's in the take on, but I'm also itching to get information about the new Plaid system from Tesla. Those two are pretty good, you know? What is the best EV technology as Giovanni Motorsports? Um, in my opinion, AC. So, yes, there are companies that still sell DC setups. With DC motors, but I like alternating current setups that are typically three phase with brushless motors. Those are really the way to go. Um, I'm still torn between radial and axial motors. Radial being the type that you may see with Tesla's kind of barrel style, and axial is what you may see with companies like Yasa that are kind of pancake. Um, because the Yasa gives you a smaller footprint and amazing torque, which you have to stack them to get a decent amount of performance, like I, like I would like. While the commercially available um, uh, barrel style, those are quite ubiquitous nowadays. So, but I prefer AC systems. How did you learn so many engineering fields? Just seems quite overwhelming. It's not Raven, it's actually quite interesting. So I've always been a curious person from childhood, from when I was younger. So when you're studying chemical engineering like I did, you have electives you can take. And I took as many electives as I could in mechanical engineering because I was really interested in that. So to complete your degree curriculum, you can take classes in, in, in statics, in mathematics, in physics, in chemistry, in organic chemistry, in physical chemistry, and that's what chemical engineering. You can take EE as well, which I took. You can take computer programming, which I took. You can take drafting, which I took then, but now you can do something like computer-aided drafting or CAD classes. All of those things go towards your curriculum to allow you to graduate. So you end up getting this very well balanced. You can even take electives in, in aerospace engineering if you want to. If you want to get composites and design aerodynamics, which I wish I did in retrospect. I should have taken that class. I heard it was an easy A and I didn't take it. I should have. I hate easy stuff. What are some of the mods you recommend for beginners and aspiring tuners? Well, if you're talking about the petrol side, it's very simple. 
the very quintessential trio intake header exhaust right now something's happening very quickly with modern day technology and modern vehicles we can now through obd flash vehicles sometimes bench flash them to tune them and get more power from them that the oems tend to leave on the table for economy uh, safety and god who knows what people do with a car reasons so there's opportunities there so intake header exhaust i may add even flash that trio make it a pod but it's also very important to be able to get a head wrapped around what you're doing. So classes like EFI 101 with Ben Strader or even HP Academy you may see on YouTube can be a very good way for you to learn the basics of tuning and be able to explore that accordingly. When it comes to the EV world, that is constantly evolving every week. So we have companies like ourselves with the Bissimoto EV Motor Division that can help you with your conversions and help point you in the right direction. And you have other companies out there, GT Electric, EV West, who can help point you in the right direction as well. Um, but we really want to walk down the path that most people are afraid to walk down. And I am here to be able to share information so we all can benefit. Because I know how difficult it was, how hard it was for me to understand simple things like, wait a minute, I need a charger on my EV car? I have a charger on my wall at home or in my shop. Why do I need a charger on board? No one explained the reason why I need a charger and why the charger that's on the wall is actually a safety device and not really a charging system itself. What converts the AC to DC, the charger itself is usually on board on the cars. But I didn't know that. So where can we go to understand that? Maybe I should do a YouTube channel and just dedicate it towards education on EVs. Maybe I should do that above and beyond what I'm doing here on Tech Tuesday, you know? Kevin, ITV Kevin, who's driven the K3V, who's driven that by the way, say yes, it sounds like the Jetsons car, it sure does. Woo -woo. It sounds pretty cool, I like it. And if you hear the scream, didn't they just have the um, Mach-E that uh, Ford just put together? that I believe, um, what's his name, uh, Von Gittin Jr. drove. You see how that thing screams like a banshee? That thing is awesome. I just love the sound. It's, it's different. And I say this almost every Tech Tuesday, right? Petrol cars are cool, but after driving a performance EV, it feels like I was more connected to the road with a performance EV because I can hear the tires, I can hear the creaks in the car, I can I have a better connection to the road, and I feel the petrol tends to, the sound and vibration tends to dampen my senses when it comes to what the road is doing with the car. It's really crazy. Bananas indeed, just very different, you know? Been watching some of the Formula E, says Jaden in a G, and see they use liquid nitrogen to cool down the batteries fast. Do you think it would be able to push electric car performance further? Yes. Think about it, guys. Petrol vehicles have had a good 100 years advantage over EVs. And as time progresses, not only will cell technology improve, which it does almost every month, but a time will come where you'll be able to charge very quickly or do hot swaps very easily and have cells that don't create a lot of heat when you pull them. So yes, you do need some kind of cooling mechanism, especially if you're pushing batteries as we sit today with today's technology, but that will continue to evolve as time progresses. You know how we had air-cooled engines and water-cooled engines and then more heat exchange opportunities and different metals and all that good stuff? The same things are happening in the EV world, but much more rapidly, which is amazing, you know? BC, thank you for helping me get through a tough time in my life, says Joker. Um, I've been following you since you were drag racing the CRX. I hope the idea I reached the top like you have. Thanks for all you have. I appreciate the kind words, Joker. I'm just trying to be there for all of you, being that person I needed when I was younger. So Joker, please stay focused, do what you need to do, stay persistent, stay motivated, and the world is your oyster. You can make great things come true. I came here with nothing and I've achieved so much and I barely even scratched the surface and there's more to come. Maybe the time will come where my company will just do so well on its own. I can get to finishing my wagon and finishing my insides and doing some experimentation, but right now it's all hands on deck. So guys, that is my Tech Tuesday for today. I really appreciate you guys coming in and listen to my thoughts on EV conversions and the future motorsports and really cool things when it comes to um, the BMW designs. And thank you Brixton Ford for allowing me the opportunity here to use your wonderful facility. And I look forward to working with all of you here at Brixton and creating some cool things. And this year guys, we're going to just go bananas. It's going to be great projects coming in. Thank you all of you for all your support. And um, by all means, I look forward to you guys staying safe and seeing you next week and having a great time together. This will be up here on IGTV indefinitely and edited portions will be on YouTube and also on the local podcast. If you're whether you have Anchor, Spotify, um, iHeartRadio, Google Podcast, Apple Podcasts, it'll be up there. Just do a search for Bisimoto and you can be able to see it. Greetings from Chile as well, Max. Thank you so much. Take care and see you soon. Stay safe, guys. Bye-bye. Cheers.